tick tock it's time to rock my name is andrew i'm here with a very very good friend of the channel he's been on our channel a couple of times already at least once lewis how are you brother i'm good how are you happy saturday night <laughs> fantastic what did you guys think of the uh intro music i liked it it was uh very van halen-ish yeah i wish i could say that that was solely and exclusively down to me bro um but i'll have to give uh credit where that uh where that credit is due a very good friend of our channel a guy called uh, luca uh donated that uh, music about six weeks ago for us nice. and i've been so bad that i haven't edited that in with um some video footage but i thought we'd uh play it with our back screen and it uh, worked out all right tim thomas he says it was yeah. pretty good what did you think about yeah. it mikey mm -hmm. he's gonna reply trying to see if i can see people on the uh on the chat uh, i can't see the chat that's okay i'll I'll, I'll I'll throw up any any questions yeah um that the guys want to ask if you can't see the chat um i'm gonna wait for a little while lewis before we do a shout out to everybody we've got six That's seven good. people watching so uh we, we, we'll do a shout out soon but i think the, the 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 really important part for us too i suppose is to acknowledge the people that will come back and watch us lewis after this video is on the channel so we do appreciate yeah. the fact that you are watching us on replay um like all the guests that we have on our show we'll attach lewis's social media accounts and his website to this video if you want to go and have a check yourself to see what lewis is doing over there on uh, um, his website we'll, uh, we'll we'll attach all those uh, links and also your instagram account where else are you active lewis so I finally was able to uh, link my Instagram to my Facebook. So I'm, I'm on Facebook now too. Um, awesome. Those are my primary ways of uh, getting in touch with everybody. Obviously, uh, uh, Instagram is what started it for me. So I'm, I'm most active there. But, um, you know, our community has been, uh, has been great at welcoming in uh, all of that. But uh, it's things we'll discuss on uh, uh, ways of how to – uh, expand my brand into the future and get it out there a little bit. But right now, just social media, word of mouth. Uh, it's keeping me busy enough right now. <laughs> uh, Matt, I'm, I'm a fan of social media, and I'm going to tell you why, if that's okay. If, and, and I think, and it's going to support, obviously, what you want to do with your brand. Um, and it's relatively uh, easy to do because it's just a matter of sharing your links on established Correct social media platforms asking other people to share your links uh that's how we've found the growth in our channel by getting people to do that lewis so um yeah. so so again if you guys want to share uh lewis's social media accounts on any of your platforms and help him get his brand out there it works and 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 you, you know lewis you gotta ask people to do it that's one yeah. thing one thing that we've um that we've experienced here on our channel you ask people to do it people want to help you lewis yeah. no the, the great part about social media more than advertising and i i went to college for advertising so i know how that whole world works but the great part about yeah. social media is that it, it's based on passion it's based on what people actually care about and so if we're in a community of people who like van halen it, it's natural that we're going to connect to each other through van halen um, as opposed to me paying money to try to get people who are not, you know, passionate about something into the mix. And so that's the great part about social media is you naturally collect, connect with people that have the same interest as you. Uh, and I yeah, found yeah. the growth to be, to, to be um, you know, great for my, what, what, my passion that turned into a business, um, that it, it worked out really well for me. And, and same with you, I would guess it's, it's a passion thing. People are, are passionate about what you talk about and, what's interest to you so um great avenue to 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 be in uh, uh in in our community 
yeah 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 and again look i just have to go again echo what, what you say you know there's facebook groups for example so putting your link onto a facebook group is is you know um really important but yeah. but don't just put your link there ask people say please follow this link or you know or this channel or whatever and subscribe yeah. you know and 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 yeah 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 so so we find that that works works really really well so um again we'll attach your facebook um um details to this video as well lewis and um yeah yeah it, it, it's look it's about being smart taking advantage of 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 that platform that's already there absolutely absolutely yeah no listen uh, you, you know it's fairfield guitar co is the instagram um facebook is under my name lewis costa and it's fairfieldguitarco.com uh you can find all my information there um and thank you again. You know, it's always appreciated that you'll, uh, um, you're supporting of, uh, of what I do. So thank you. No problem. Uh, when you're talking, I'll make sure I'll grab that link and I'll drop that link here in, in, in the chat anyway. But uh, yeah. yeah, good good to see you. Um, again, like a lot of us, I follow you um, on, on Instagram especially. And, you know, seeing the new Eddie belt that came out, you know, and you discussed that when you were on the channel with us last time, the 5150 guitar strap and 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 some of the products, you know, that you've um, that you've developed. Uh, Lewis, give us and the viewers a um, um, bit of a opportunity for for you to talk about, you know, the progress with with things, what's happening, and 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 where you're going with the Fairfield Guitar Company? Be as detailed as you want, because remember, people love pe yeah, pe people details. people love the details, brother. <laughs> well, well, no, thank you. Listen, I, I've I've tried to expand. Um, obviously, we we all know that. Um, uh, yeah, the circles guitar is right there. Um, we all know that um, I, I'm a Van Halen freak, but I, I'm also a, a fan of other you know musicians, and so. Um, I've tried to expand a little bit out, but just to go back uh, a quick step, um, Fairfield Guitar Company started out of a, an opportunity I saw with a, um, a bomber strap that Eddie Van Halen used to use. It's a World War II strap. Um, it's right here. Um, it's, it's a World War II buckle that was used uh, by the bombers um, when they were at the you know, shooting out of a plane, they would buckle themselves into the uh, into the plane. Uh, and Eddie Van Halen must have found one um, and used it um, as a lock guitar. You know, before we had um, strap locks, he used it uh, and um, locked it around uh, an eye hook on his guitars. Mm -hmm. um, primarily used on the at the time it was the black and white Frankie. It was the shark guitar. Um, and it was the Megazone, I believe they call it, uh, which was, you know, very rarely seen, but uh, mainly on the black and white Frankie. And so it was an opportunity that I found, I found the guy who had a bunch of these stored away in his attic. He wasn't doing anything with them, and I knew what they were. And so I bought the whole lot from him and uh, made a couple for a couple of friends. Before I bought the lot from him, I made a couple for a couple of friends, and then it snowballed from there. People started finding out that I had access to these, um, you know, 80 plus year old um, uh, metal pieces and I had the webbing made and uh, reproduced and the gentleman who makes them for me had a little bit of history on um, on uh, the military and was able to help with that and so it, it rolled very easily uh, and then it just snowballed into you know meeting Mikey Mikey was probably one of my first customers Mikey Mojo uh, hey Mikey um, and uh, Steve-O and Kurt and it just it snowballed from there Rob Johnson was also a very big supporter of mine early on he's um, he's about two hours north of me and has an amazing amazing collection of uh, Van Halen guitars uh, and so I went up there maybe about a month month and a half ago to say hi to him um, and obviously that, got into that, that, that would have been sorry for interrupting that would have been amazing we've had Rob on the channel we've we've been blessed to have him on and uh, talk about in particular the music man guitars but that must have been can i just 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 ask you quickly that must have been 
a freak out session for you. Oh, I, I, I wanted to pummel him over the head and walk out with all those guitars. It, it's it's just an amazing, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm one of the guys and we did a quick video, we did a quick live feed when I was at his house. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm into more of the lesser known guitars. So the yeah. 5150 was to me like, all right, let, let's see some of the different things. So I geeked out over, he had a real Steinberger. He had the Steinberger with the, uh, the 5150 mm -hmm. stripes on it. Um, he had the yellow double neck. Um, he, he had some cool thing. He had the Megazone. Um, he had some cool things that I've personally never seen, uh, but got my hands on and got to check out. And he was very, very, very nice. Um, he was like, pick up whatever you want, play whatever you want. Um, he actually even plugged me into his setup, and it was, it was oh. mind. You know, I play out of this little Marshall here. I got a little Code Fifty that, you know, like tonight when the wife's asleep, the kids are asleep. I plug into that and have fun with that. Um, but he plugged me into this wet dry system, and I said, I got to come up next time, and we got to do a, a whole analyzation of the wet dry system because it just sounded amazing. Oh, can you let me know? <laughs> when you guys plan that because if yeah. you're going to go live and talk about that uh and let rob know we'll do anything and everything we can to yeah. advertise that stream because i think people will just be we, we just can't get enough of that information that's just going to yeah. be a fantastic show well i don't i i look at it this way i don't know if people are like me we concentrate a lot on guitars um i don't concentrate much on um, on amps. So I see a question coming in. Can you ask yeah. us what length is better for little guys on five nine and thin? Um, so uh, bomber strap. So it's 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 funny. The length of the strap. I always tell people, it, it's not a matter of how high or short you are. It, it's a matter of where you like to wear your guitar height wise. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I'm five ten. He mentions he's five nine. We're about the same. Um, I use mine a little bit higher. I know some guys that want it way lower. Um, so it's really, it's, it's for me, I've, I've noticed it's not based on height. It's more based on um, where you like to wear it. Um, you know, I became friends with that guy who does the drop strap that goes higher yeah. and lower. Like, I wish we yeah. had something like that. And I've been talking to him um, early on about maybe adding one of those onto my straps. Um, but it, it's more of, it's a personal preference. I tell people measure the strap that you like the best. Um, and use the length from that. Um, and I obviously, uh, the only tweak I do to all the straps that I do is Eddie made straps for himself. So they were one length, um, you know, they, they, they weren't alter alterable. He made them for himself. And obviously when you're trying to promote a product for everybody to use, you need to have variances in, um, in, um, in lengths. So yeah, uh, uh, you know, uh, ben mentions and Tom mentions I wear mine at the belly button. It just depends on where you're comfortable. I, you know, I, I do a lot of playing sitting down. So I usually like my strap where my guitar is sitting down. But then when you stand up on it, it's like up here on you. It's like way too high. Sure. So, sure. Um, it, 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 it's, it all depends. But measuring your favorite strap hole to hole um, and, and getting that length is, is the best uh, reference for me. I, I just got a couple of orders today where people were like, just do what Eddie did. You know, do it the same length what Eddie did. I don't know what Eddie did, so you know, we I didn't I was I didn't get a chance to actually hold his and measure it. And he was a small guy, you know, he was sure. he was a petite guy. Um, and so um, also, let's say on the dog collar strap that I make, my chains are a little finer than what Eddie had because Eddie's was like super heavy. Like I got the chain that he had, and it just weighed a ton. And so I tried to source a little smaller of a uh, of a chain just to make it wearable let's say or manageable um so it, it's not an exact science unfortunately um it, it depends on a couple of different things and i try to make it alterable so we can we can change it uh based on our moods on our feel on uh you know how we play um uh things like that so but anyway yeah, that's, 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 yeah. That, Sorry. That, 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 that's always an interesting little conversation isn't it about uh 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 heights um i know guys too that that depending on the guitar yeah. um they might have it higher or lower you, you know Correct. depending on 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 the type of guitar like oh you know if you're playing like a fuller body guitar a lot of guys like to have it a little bit higher but if they're playing a smaller body guitar yeah. they like to have it you know 
you know, and it's, vice versa. Yeah, there's no science. I, I, I'll give you a funny story. You know, obviously a lot of people know that I gave uh, Phil X some straps to use on the Bon Jovi tour. And once he was done with the Bon Jovi tour, he went on to uh, Kurt Daimler. So, um, and he actually mentioned to me how um, he he has it on an Explorer because he wanted to get that mentality of, you know, Eddie's shark guitar, uh, or sure. that old Ibanez. And so he wanted to put it on the Explorer. So he says that with Bon Jovi, he wore his guitar a lot lower. But with Kurt, he had to raise his guitar. So he had to, although it was the same guitar, it was the same strap, um, on playing different music, he, he noticed he had to raise his guitar a little bit. So we had to uh, we had to flub a little bit on the end pieces, uh, the tail piece, the leather tail piece on, on that bomber strap. So even him, you know, same guitar, different style of music, he had to he had to alter it a little bit. So it depends on a bunch of different things. Oh, it's interesting that you should say that because I, I've got a, I just got a Gretsch and I've yep. been after years, after 30 years, I've finally nailed a real yep. basic Travis style picking using my yep. thumb, but I had oh. to, I had to lift it. I, I had to hoist it up to be able yep. to, 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 I couldn't do it at my normal height. Correct. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, even I think it was Caleb from Nerd Halen who once mentioned you know, what's, what's the best advice you have for people? And he says, practice standing up because it's just, you're used to probably playing, you know, the Travis picking sitting down. And then when you yeah. go stand up, the guitar is lower and your fingers are not doing what your brain wants them to in a different position. So it's a matter yeah, of, yeah. you know, what, what do they say? Practice, practice, practice. You know, we got to practice to do some stuff. But I remember early on in my, in my guitar career, I was listening to, you know, Vi and Petrucci. And for that stuff, you got you got to wear the guitar all the way up here. It's some technical stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then when Nirvana came out in Pearl Jam, we were all like, "All right, let's lower the guitar." So we're not doing technical stuff anymore. So because we're just it, playing it, power chords. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're playing jazz guitar, you got to get in high. You're absolutely right. Exactly. So, um, yeah. Unfortunately, it's not an exact science, but measuring your old strap, it, it, measuring your favorite strap, is what I recommend, and, and taking yeah. it from there. Um, yeah 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 but also so um once that that bomber strap really hit then people started asking me to do other things um and i started i started doing you know the dog collar strap took me a long time to um i i, I get very anal i want everything to be precise uh and i take my time and it took me a good five months to just analyze everything on that strap the right buckles the right clasps um, I got a lot of help from a lot of people in the community, so it wasn't it wasn't a one man job. It was it was a community coming together uh, to get it right. And then I had to make a die for the leather piece. Um, you know, it was uh, the first I think ten uh, or so dog collar straps were all hand cut, um, and they were a little rough for my taste. So then when I got the die made and a die, I don't know if people know what it is in, when uh, talking about leather. It's basically a um, a cutout of the shape that you want that when you put it on leather you press it and it cuts out on a big piece of leather the shape that you want um, and they're not you know they're not super expensive to make they're not super cheap to make but once you have it you're guaranteed that everything is going to come out exactly the same so as much as i yeah. would love to do hand work on a lot of stuff because uh that's the mentality i grew up in i work for an italian clothing company and hand works always in the back of your mind um modern machines sometimes uh make a little bit more accurate of a product um, oh, well, i'm so, glad you mentioned that because that's something that i was just going to get to you to explain your attention to detail in your eye because you're involved in the high end of the of the garment industry so so that's that's your training that's that's where you don't cut corners so you're taking that right. perspective that mentality with with this product and and even more than that it's got your name attached to it too lewis right. so right. Yeah. yeah listen you you want to be able to um, offer a product that is a premium product. At least that's the, the world I, you know, the, the shirt company that I work for, and I won't mention it here because I don't want to get the, that involved in here, but um, the shirt company I work for makes shirts that are, you know, in US dollars from $250 to $495. So you're really Great. dealing with one percenters. Um, and I wanted to do the same thing with straps. I, I didn't want to just put out a strap and uh, make a, 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 a subpar product. I wanted to make a, a quality product. Um, I got beat up for it a little bit. You know, a lot of people, it was funny. There's a funny story coming with this. Um, it started off at $165 and then it went up to 175 once COVID, you know, all the, 
all that stuff started happening with production. Uh, and they're all made here in the States. So I, I try to stick to 100% made in the States. Um, one, because I like that mentality. And two is I can control the product so much more if somebody's local and I can go visit and, 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 uh, um, and, and keep an eye on the quality, let's say, um, as opposed to doing it overseas. And one guy told me, he goes, you're overpriced with the, the, the bomber strap. So I, I, I jokingly just emailed back, then go buy it from the competition. And he goes, there is no competition. I go, exactly. You know, like, how am I overpriced if there's, if there's no point of reference? The only point of reference is uh, an actual strap that was taken out of a bomber plane in World War II. Um, and you can go on eBay and get those for two, 250 to 350 maybe even $450, depending on condition. And, you know, they're... It's not just guitarists that are going after it or Van Halen guitarists that are going after it at that point. It's military buffs that are going after it at that point, too. So, you know, I don't think there's any military buffs buying my strap. Um, but there's a ton of military buffs looking at World War II memorabilia, like authentic memorabilia. Um, and those things should, you know, ask for a little bit more money because they were actually used. They were actually government issued. Um, and minor reproductions, as much as this is authentic um it wasn't used in war you know it was stuck in a box for the last 80 years um worst i had to do to them is try to clean off a little bit of rust on them that's been uh been gathering on them i have a picture on my instagram of a box full of them that they're going through a cleaning process at the moment and it's a, it needs to be a gentle cleaning process that takes a while because um the rust needs to be taken off but the metal is so soft that if you just throw it into a bin of acid it'll probably disintegrate half of it because there's a lot of yeah. the, the spring on it is um, it, it's it's thinner than the rest of it as as chunky as most of it is. There's some pieces on there that you know require a little bit of attention, and you can't just throw it in a bin. Um, and there's moving parts, obviously. You know this this goes up and down, and that latch opens, and so you have to just be careful um, that when you're cleaning it, you're cleaning it properly, and it's it's gonna get, it's gonna be something that can be used in you can hear it. It's I'm, I'm ruining my, my desk here. It's 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 a uh, it's it's a hefty piece of metal. It's a hefty piece of metal. So. Well, look, look, I, I understand where you come from because in my business we deal in high end uh, um, supply of um, a power tool brand from Germany. You know, yeah. and and the pricing of the tools that we supplied supply compared to some of the other established brands that are made in other places around the world uh we're twice the price and 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 every now and again you get people that want to that can't understand or comprehend the price differences um and 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 look i don't want to be disrespectful or arrogant when i say this but you know we we are we, we we're not situated in the market to explain that if you can't understand that if you can't understand something's made in germany you know, uh, and and this is the reason why. Um, yeah. And look, I'm sure a lot of people that are buying your product understand and clearly know that you yeah. are picking up the authentic piece. And you know, um, and and that's the guarantee, isn't it, Lewis? You, you know, yeah, you yeah. you're getting as authentic to what Eddie had. Correct. That it's basically the same. Correct. Yeah. Uh, again, going back to the bomber strap. Um, it, you know, this is here's a perfect example. This is actually what the government used. There was no uh, leather end piece to it. You know, Eddie ended up taking a, a, um, a tail piece from a, an acoustic uh, strap and putting it on there. Um, and so I looked at a ton of pictures and tried to copy that pa that tail piece perfectly. In fact, that's why it's not here because I'm having it R&D again. And, uh, I'm wow. seeing if I can, I can get it done somewhere else um, in a little bit softer material uh, for the next cutting. Um, so just looking at options, I saw a, a, a question coming over uh, on the bottom of the screen here about R&D. R&D takes up a lot of my time. Yeah, can you explain the chat uh, associated with prototyping and R&D? It takes a lot of time. You know, prototyping is, um, so just to explain something, I, I don't really make any of these straps. I make about four of them myself. Um, I design and work with artisans who are uh, masters in their field uh, to make the ultimate strap. So um, I made the, um, the bumblebee strap I made. Uh, you know, my mom got me a sewing machine a couple of years ago for Christmas and I put that to use. So I wow. made that. I make the, um, uh, the utility belt I make myself. 
Um, but some of this stuff that requires some heavy machinery, um, I, I work with people who are in my field. So I work in the men's clothing industry and, you know, I work with some belt manufacturers and some leather manufacturers. And so I, I lean on some of the people in those industries to concentrate yep. on what they're best at. So if there's belt manufacturer, um, I, you know, I just spoke to a, a, a one that they're based in, uh, in Atlanta. Um, and he says, we can make anything, you know, as long as we have the dye and we have the, you know, they can cut any leather, any color. And so um, I was just talking to a friend of mine who wants a Stevie Vaughn strap. You know, there's a black strap with a purple, it's like a bluish SRV on it and it can be done. You know, it's, it's, if you go to people who know how to work leather, they can do anything. It's nothing, wow. nothing here is impossible, uh, but it's just a matter of finding the right people to do it. So r and takes up a lot of my time. I, I, I test out every single strap, except for the bomber, I've tested out with at least four or five people. Um, and I do it for twofold. I want the best quality. Um, I want the best price. Obviously, I'm, uh, if, if I'm here to sell stuff, I'm looking at price as well. Um, and then what I do is I assemble them myself. So um, the dog collar strap, for, for example, there's one person who makes the studded strap. Um, I ended up finding the, the metal hardware uh, and so I assemble it myself, but I don't make the leather part of it. I go to uh, a leather expert uh, to do it. Uh, and that's just evolved over time. I have, uh, you know, the, the banjo strap. We had discussed the, the 5150 strap. This is um, this is all cut by hand. Um, there's wow. a lady in the Pacific Northwest who does it all by hand. Um, because I thought it, it just gave it a little bit more authenticity than, than just stamping it out. The, the, the ones... Um, we did a die for it and I stamped it out and it looked too generic. It just, I didn't, I didn't care for it. I wanted something with a little meat, a little character to it. Um, and so the R and D takes up a lot of time. Uh, most of the R and D, my wife will attest to this is me just sitting on my computer or on my phone, researching, 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 because once, once you know that this is the class that you want on the, on the banjo strap, then you got to go find it. Um, and, you know, there's manufacturers who make this, uh, but the problem after COVID has become, do they have it in stock? Do they have enough in stock? You know, do, are they getting more? Uh, is it stuck on a boat somewhere or is it made in the United States? The, the utility belt that I make, um, I was happy to find everything made in the United States. So there was, there was no issues with getting parts. Um, everything Isn't that in- amazing? Yeah. I, 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 I find that phenomenal that you can tap into that because that's exactly what Eddie would have used in yeah. the 80s and the 70s yeah. when he was constructing these these accessories himself. But but I just want to add one little piece to what Lewis is saying, guys, and I'm sure a lot of the people in the chat, Mikey and, and Bent will agree, I'll, and I'll do a shout out. We've got seven guys, six guys here watching, I'll, and I'll name you guys very, very yes. soon. But if you're spending... If you're spending a lot of money building an EVH replica guitar, Lewis, and, and you're right. getting the best period correct pickup, and you're spending the time getting that paint job, and you're getting that whale tail Floyd Rose, yeah. it's only right. natural that a lot of guys want that period correct strap. Correct. Yeah, you know, Mikey Mojo says, I see, I read what he's saying. He's right. He, he owns every single one of my straps, you know, because he, he's got all the guitars. I, I again, I posted on my Instagram a picture that he sent me of the Rasta with the you know the banjo strap, the black and white with the with the the bomber strap. Um, and it, it is a matter like it, for example, this this you know Circles guitar. The prices are getting crazy on them. You know, I think they were wow. selling here in the states for seventy nine seven ninety nine new. Um, yeah. You know, when he was alive, I think it's 2013, 2014. Um, a friend of mine just texted me this morning. He's like, you know, they're going for 20, 22 to twenty six hundred dollars. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. I didn't get it for that much. I got a deal on it, so I, 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 I grabbed one. Uh, but they're going for that much because they. Just, and back then, nobody bought them. Not, not too many people were interested in them. I heard that EVH discontinued them because the sales were just not great on them. Um, and it makes sense, you know. After Eddie died, every the. the Everybody wants it now that Eddie died. He passed away and the resurgence of it. And, and there's just a, a, a wanting for it again. So I bought one too. You know, I spent more than $7.99 to get mine. I saw one listed for $2,400. You know, it, it's getting crazy prices now. Um, and, you know, 
the, my, the banjo strap that goes with this type of guitar is $115. Like, if you're spending $2,400 on a guitar, you certainly have $115 for the, for the correct strap. But it also takes that right, that same that mentality of the person who wants the strap to match the guitar. Some people don't care. You know, that's fine. Um, that's some fine. people don't want to yep. put eye hooks on their guitars. Yep. I'm, I'm one yep. that does not want to put an eye hook on my guitars. It's yep. just not something I was used to, not something I like doing. Uh, most people in the Van Halen community do it. Um, I don't like to do it. It's just, I'm, that's just me. But um, And I'm working on stuff that you can put on your guitar without putting an eye hook on. So little little nod to what's coming in the future. And, 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 and Lewis and guys in the chat too, there's nothing wrong with buying a guitar as an investment and buying a period correct guitar strap because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's only going to get more valuable as time gets on. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that because yeah. at the end of the day, you know, look, look at 58 Sunburst, you know, uh, Les Pauls, yeah, you know, yeah. millions, million yeah. dollars. Yeah. Well, listen, I bought the circles as an investment. I play it. I, I believe... I, you know, I was I was younger, and I ended up buying when I was I don't know I must have been in my mid twenties. I bought mm -hmm. a Martin Eric Clapton. Uh, it was a double zero, I believe it was. Oh, um, the orchestra model. Yes. Orchestra oh my God, that's six thousand. That's six thousand dollars here. It wasn't six thousand dollars back then. It was probably you know t you know twelve to fourteen hundred dollars twenty years ago. And my mom looked at me. She would notice. She would come to my apartment and she would look at it and she goes, "You never take that thing out of the case." And I go, I don't want to ruin it. I spent, you know, back then, $1,200 was a lot of money 20 years ago. Uh, now it's like standard for a guitar. Um, but I, and my mom said, if you're not going to use it, why do you have it? You know, and I, and I didn't look at it. it. I didn't buy it with the mentality to, to have it appreciate. I bought it because I was a fan of his music. You know, Unplugged yep. was out at yep. that time. And, uh, but I, I said to myself, I will never own another guitar. She's right. I will never know, own another guitar that I don't, I don't play. Um, but I tend to go through guitars pretty quickly. I'm not loyal to my guitars. Um, and it's mostly Good. because I'm not in a band at the moment. You know, if I was in a band and I was playing yeah. and I was going out weekly, you'd have your guitar. Yeah. Uh, you know, these straps have taken over my life. So <laughs> I play when I can now. Um, and there's no, um, there's no uh, affinity to one particular guitar. And so I tend to switch out pretty quickly. You know, I, I just built um, a Charvel out of parts. I bought a Locky neck, which was gorgeous. Wow. Um, actually right around the corner. It's going to be shipped out on Monday. I put it all together. I played it for about a week and then I said, Oh, I'm going to sell it. You know, it's just, uh, it, it's for me, it was more, it kept me off the streets when I was a kid fooling around with guitars. And mm -hmm. so it just became a passion, but I, mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't build it to, to keep it. I built it because I found the body. Uh, you know, I found the right pickups. I found the right, you know, um, uh, the, the, um, chevron tuners the godo chevron tuners from the 1980s and i put a guitar together uh and once i put it together not that i was bored of it i was like okay what do i do with it now you know i'm not one of those yeah. guys that has 50 guitars you know i have four or five i play all four or five of them and then i said let me sell it and move on to another project and that's what keeps my brain you know uh, people meditate different ways and i meditate by you know soldering you know pots together as i'm holding pots in my hand <laughs> uh it just it's it is it uh, while I'm working on straps on the side. Fantastic. I, and look, look, I think that's uh, that, that's the key point. Uh, if, if, and I'm not going to argue with that too. You know, if you want to buy something as an investment and you're just buying something as a project to move it on, you know, that makes perfect sense because, um, yeah, you know, that that's the creative thing that you have inside of you, Lewis, you know, as a music fan, as a businessman as well, you know, it's, it's, it's what drives us. And, you know, I, I, I'm sure all of us would agree, you know, that's that's one of the key things, you know, so yeah. um, I, I I certainly have a lot of respect for music because it's given me that part of 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 just trying to get better, just trying yeah. to get better with just just being a guitar player. So if you can take that without being philosophical and sounding like a new age uh youtube show if yeah. you can take that from one part of your life and amplify that in other parts well you know all all power to you sure 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 no it's uh we all have different passions you all have re different reasons why we got into it you know my dad built furniture for a living so that tinkering of fooling around with guitars is is in my dna somewhere right uh you know it, it's it, and i'm totally at home practicing for an hour or fixing a guitar for an hour. 
if it, to me, it, that, that's the same level of, uh, of comfort to, to, to me. And as I get older and I have all more aches and pains, one of them hurts more than the other, but we still do it, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and look, I've said this before too, Lewis, you, you know, when I was growing up and even now, you, you know, if I meet somebody, inevitably the question's going to get to, do you like music? Do you play music? You know, what do you listen to? And, you, you know, um, the person that always said to me, I love music, and it may be something completely off tangent that I don't have a personal uh, interest in, but they love it. I've always loved the fact that this person's had that passion for music because I've got a passion for it, so I've respected sure. it. But when I've met people that said, no, I don't, don't like music. Yeah. Don't like it. It's like, okay. Uh, it's, it's amazing to me how many times I'll show you my phone. I was at a trade show in Chicago last week and obviously my phone's always with me. And so whenever I'm texting or calling somebody, you know how many people just stop me in the middle of the, in the middle of the, the trade show and they're like, Oh, you're a Van Halen fan. And I don't want to go into the whole thing. I'm like, yep, I'm a Van Halen yep. fan. But if they only knew the, the level of Van Halen fan that I was, but it's nice to see just random people walking by uh, you know, knowing what this pattern means. And some of them are like, you know, it was my first album back in 1977 that I bought when I was a kid, or, you know, my kid just got into Van Halen. And so uh, there, there's people who are out there who, who will have the same connection as you. Um, and music is one of those beautiful things that, you know, can do that. You know, yeah. Regardless of yeah. the political oh. affiliation or anything, music is, is the, 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 for me, the lowest common denominator. We're all going to get to, you know, there's, Everybody must like a little bit of something in music, whether it's you know, classical yeah. or Van Halen. It's it's what makes us human is is enjoying music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I remember we had Mikey on the show once, and we were talking about uh, that the the EVH pattern, you, you know, mm -hmm. and we were sharing um, experiences that we had with people that they recognised that pattern, but yeah. they didn't know the difference between the fifty one fifty and the Franken strat yeah. you, you know um so so you know a lot of people that i knew thought that the 5150 was the franken strat you, you know yeah. they didn't have that they couldn't make that distinction but right. you know because because we were aristocratic in our outlook because we knew the difference <laughs> yeah, yeah you know we, it's like, we, it's we, like we, roll, yeah. we roll our eyes when we hear somebody say oh the black yeah. and white frankie was different than the red black and white oh it's the same guitar. Like, you know he never held both of them at the same time until they Fender started reproducing all of them, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 you know, I'm old enough to remember being told that and arguing with people saying, "No, no, it can't be." <laughs> it, was, it was funny because you know we, we had that um, uh, that display at the Metropolitan Museum of Art here in New York, where they yeah. had these Franken the real one, um, and yeah. then two rooms over there was a setup with amps and the black and white. And everybody thought that there was two guitars. Those were two real guitars. There was the, the red Frankie and the black and white Frankie. But obviously all our nerds know that the black and white was the fake one because the black and white one is underneath the red paint in the other room. And so, but most people were like, oh, these were his two guitars. And you hear it and you're like, I'm not going to get into it. I'm going to be here 20 minutes explaining to them why it's not the same guitar, but let them believe that if they want, right? <laughs> uh, and, and again, again, you know, before we move on, guys, and I'm sure everyone in the chat will, will appreciate this too. This is one of the great things about levels and, and degrees of fanness that you can have, you know. You've got a lot of people that have a surface level, you know, appreciation. You, you know, yeah, I love the album, but, you know, yeah, yeah I know the music. Yeah, 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 I know Cabo Wabo, but... Uh, okay. yeah, don't, yeah, 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 um, that, that's about it, but you know, then, but you know, uh, th then I jump on this show here and get some co hosts on or some hosts on Lewis, and I just go, I, I, I didn't know that, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, it, it happens often, you know, I go, well, I, you know, I, I, I can't tell you every guitar that um Eddie played on every single song that he recorded, but I yeah. know a few guys that can, yeah. No, for sure. Listen, it's it's a matter of passion, right? And how much you de how deep you want to get into it. And uh, I always considered myself a Van Halen fan, but until I started making straps, I didn't realize that there were people who knew, you know, every minute detail of the last thirty years. Uh, and you learn from them. And if you're passionate about it, you watch shows like this and you learn about it. Um, and uh, and you learn. Um, and that's the same thing as as what I'm trying to do. You know, we were talking in the green room. I'm gonna tell everybody that. It, there, for me, it's it's. I wanted to move away, not from Van Halen, but for, I, I think I did all I could 
uh, with what I had. Um, and it was time to pursue something different. So as much as I made six different Van Halen straps, for me, it was like, okay, what's next? You know, I, um, and we were talking, you know, going back to what I was saying before, we were talking in the green room about how everything Van Halen seems to come back to me. Uh, and so as much as I try to veer off of it a little bit, it's still, it, it, it's still a passion that comes back. So leading away from the straps, you know, I, I make about five or six different straps. Um, I got an opportunity from a friend of mine to um, jointly purchase some of uh, uh, the PV new old stock necks that the factory wow. never made into guitars. So yeah, so there's there was a bunch of them out there on eBay, and you know they they did a sale at the factory, I believe, in 2018. Um, and most of the items that were sold were guitar bodies, were guitar necks, but most of the necks went to a friend of mine actually, uh, RJT Guitars. Um, he's on Insta on uh, eBay. Uh, and he, he bought a lot of the unfinished guitars. So guitars that had half the fretboard with frets or guitars that weren't sanded on the back or guitars that um, were factory seconds that never got um, finalized. Uh, and so all the the necks that he had did not have a serial number, but maybe had you know the patent pending uh, uh, stamp on the back and Eddie's logo, Eddie's signature on the back of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I was talking to him a while ago and there was an opportunity to buy first quality necks, you know, perfect quality necks um, that, you know, we're jointly uh, filing the frets, uh, rounding the fretboard, oiling, um, you know, waxing and oiling the, the wood, making sure they're perfect quality necks. And so we have uh, we have a bunch of them. Um, I have one on my website right now. Uh, I'm going to have four more coming up. I just got some more detailed pictures uh, of, of them all. And so these are um, stamped where there's some of them are not stamped on the back of the headstock. Some of them are stamped with Eddie's signature and some of them are stamped with Eddie's signature and patent pending on them. Um, none of them have the black PV logo on the front, but all of them have the scoop in the headstock. Um, wow. Yeah. So they're, you know, beautiful bird's eye maple on everything. Um, a couple of them I saw today were, uh, you know, they're, they're faded. So let's say one of them had a piece of tape on the fretboard. And okay. after 20 years of being in the factory, you take that tape off and you sand it down. And no matter how much you sand it, there's still like a little offset or like a, a discoloration on the fretboard. But it's a perfect quality neck from the factory. And, and obviously prices are going to range depending on items like that. Um, yep. they're, they're authentic PB necks. Um, from the factory uh, that are first quality next. And so we have our hands. I think if, if I want to, I think last check we did, there's probably 80 of them, 40, 40, 50 of them in perfect condition, and then 30 of them that need a little bit of work that we're going through right now. And most of the work is, um, you know, the factory didn't sand them down 100%. So they might have some some marks on them, but very faint that you wouldn't feel with your hands. But things that, you know, the factory didn't finish or, and then put a serial number on. They're all not serial numbered and not uh, PV stamped on the headstock, but Eddie Van Halen stamped on the back of the headstock. Well, well clearly, Lewis, you, you know, there's going to be a market for that. And again, for the naysayers that might complain to Lewis about the price, I'm sure Lewis is going to turn around and say, well, actually, guys, you should be thanking me because we rescued these because this could have turned out to just be firewood. So, yeah, well, listen, I, yeah. I think people knew what they had um, and uh, they're still making the guitar, but obviously they don't they can't stamp it with Eddie's signature on it anymore. No. So, they're, you know, I did get a lot of people. I, I posted one the other day, I think it was a thousand dollars. And people said, oh, did Eddie play it himself? And I'm like saying to myself the whole guitar goes for four grand, three, four grand, it would make sense that a new neck, factory new neck, would go for six to a thousand dollars, right? You know, I, I realize it doesn't have the PV logo on it, but let's say you yep. have one and the neck's warped or cracked or, um, yep. and I spoke to a friend of mine the other day who said, you know, he, went, he brought it in for servicing and they, they ruined the fretwork. So it's either yep. refret it or get a new neck. He was like, I'd rather yeah, just yeah. get a new neck. Than new neck. So it, it depends on what you need, what you want. But the opportunity was there, and we took it. And we said, you know, we, 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 we have friends in this community. We know the value of it in this community. Uh, like you said, it could be firewood, or we could take the opportunity and try to get it directly to the people that know what it is. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 and, and you, you know, again, you know, I'm a Van Halen fan, and, and I'm sure that, that all the cats in the chat will agree. You, you, you know, you're giving that, you're taking that from from that situation, from this factory situation, and making it available directly to the guys and girls out there who yeah. who, who are going to be interested in it. So so yeah. so you, you know, if you're looking for a PV neck, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, the great Problem part about too is, is my friend and I are both, uh, you know, we've both worked on guitars for the last 30 years. So okay. we're, we're happy to say that you're not just buying a neck from the factory that needs work. You know, we've gone through it. We filed the frets. We've leveled the frets. Uh, we've wow. rounded the edges on the fingerboard. We've waxed it. We've prepared it just to put on a, on a, on a body and play it, basically. There's no work because a lot of these necks that PV did let out, you know, needed a little bit of work. You know, they were still in production and they just halted production and, you know, uh, put them aside. So, um, and then obviously on my website, I'm putting a bunch of, you know, parts that I've um, uh, I've gathered up through the years. I just sold a uh, um, FRT3 uh, Floyd. Um, yeah, just sold one of those. I, I realized I was pricing it a little high until some experts told me exactly what I had. I thought I had a prototype um and then obviously you know thinking that i had the holy grail it wasn't a prototype it was a fernandez issued floyd rose uh and i just sold the humpback nut this morning to another gentleman who uh w wanted to put it on his uh on his uh, frankenstrat so there's some real 80s parts some five-way switches um i have a bunch of um the goto uh chevron tuners in both gold and silver and so just shipped a pair of those to Singapore two days ago. Um, there's people out there looking for these vintage parts, and they're they're harder and harder to get. But um, you know, when you're when you're obsessed with the '80s like I am, you collect this stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and it's it's like a curator um, um, as well too. So yeah, yeah, and and look at uh, again, Mikey's got this awesome comment here, directly adding value. You, you, you know, so. Yeah, you know that, that that's fantastic. You can't believe what he says. He's he's biased. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mate, I'm just going to do a quick shout out before we continue um, having this awesome conversation. Uh, Mikey Mojo, good to see you, brother. Great friend that's of the channel. Th thank you, brother. Gretch Zeppelin, he won a Van Halen T-shirt off us um, nice. a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Lewis, we had a show and uh we celebrated our five thousand subscribers and oh, we had a draw. That. Yes. See that. Yes. yeah yeah so so Gretsch zeppelin uh won that we've had three uh t-shirt competition winners on our channel we want to yeah. do that uh monthly we're going to do that monthly um now being a monetized channel so we want to give back to the people in the chat lewis you know we're going to do little things like that little draws Perfect. and giveaways yeah um um it's something that we're all looking forward to do we've got tim thomas hey tim very very good friend of the channel uh charlie yes hey thank you charlie thank you for joining us bent tom another van halen nut bent tom is uh yeah 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 um yeah 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 yeah, yeah. The, 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 this guy knows guitar gauges that eddie was using in 1977 no, you know uh, yeah yeah tom <laughs> um andrew um how do you pronounce that N uh, nych nietzsche yeah um, Hello, andrew. Please, uh pleased to uh, meet you andrew i think it's the first time he's been in the uh um yep. in, in the uh uh channel andrew can you please subscribe if you haven't already and we'll subscribe directly back to you that's what we do here on this channel if you can help um subscribe to us that'll be great who else have I missed? We had Quinton James up here earlier in the chat. And and just give me a second. And I think we've done a shout out to everybody. Um, so thank you guys for joining us. It's always humbling to hang out with uh, with guys in the chat. We've got Bernard James. Thank you very much, Bernard James, for the uh, super chat. Uh, yeah, sexiest dude in New England. Evening, boys. So I, I'm definitely not in New England. So I am. I know he's talking about Muir himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord! Um, uh, and we've got there. Julia here I'm, as well. 
and Nelson Rodriguez. So thank you guys awesome. for hanging out with us. If you guys have any questions for Lewis, please you fire do. them into the chat. Yeah, I met Boner Jams maybe about uh, two, three weeks ago. He's not too far from me. So I, I went, uh, I drove up on one of my days off. I was guitar surfing uh, store to store and he was close by. So I went to say hi to him. Uh, pleasure meeting him. Awesome. Um, Awesome. Yeah. Oh, actually, I'm going to do a plug for Boner Jams too. Um, thank you for reminding me that. Guys, please go to our community page and our channels page. On our channels page, you'll see all our friends who have um, YouTube channels there. Go and subscribe to all of them. They're all our friends. If you want to be on our channels page, let me know and I'll put you there. Um, but if you go and support Boner Jams, he's hanging out with some um, rat bags. They've got a channel called Under the Bus Network. We know all those guys there, so go and hang out. Give them a, a sub. And yeah. please, if you are subscribing to them, tell them that the 5150 show sent you, please. Yeah, good guys there. Um, good friends as well. Um, but no, special shout out. We were mentioning... Um, uh, Mikey Mojo. Obviously, if it wasn't for him, we would I wouldn't be talking to you right now. He's the one who put us in touch originally. Um, so, Mikey, uh, you're going to be my only shout out, Mikey, because uh, I thank you for putting me in touch with Andrew. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mikey. Yeah, that that's fantastic um, because Lewis and I were talking um, in the green room, guys. Uh, that uh, we're, we're only a small channel here. But, you know, statistics mean a little bit, you know, to, to, to what we do here. And we went and had a look and uh, the, that uh, video we did with Lewis, uh, uh, 1,200, 1,200 views, Lewis. So, um, you, you know, anything over 200 views for our channel is an achievement. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I give credit to Mikey and you for that one. I didn't bring any. <laughs> that, that's uh, cool. Well, we, yeah, yeah. Well, that was a great show. Um, and, uh, you know, it certainly helps when we've got people in the chat and you've got a product, you know, that we're all passionate about. And, um, you know, um, even if we can't get the product ourselves directly for a lot of reasons, at least we're participating and having a conversation with someone directly involved with it, Lewis. And I, and I yep. think that's the connection we all have, too. Correct, correct, correct. No, I... Um... Uh, in fact, you know, it, it, for the, the first part of this year, I was having a hard time shipping to Australia, but it's open now and good. And uh, Australia was actually my number one uh, country outside of the U.S. ordering from me. Uh, Canada took over recently. Uh, I got a bunch wow. of orders from up in Canada. Uh, but um, product can ship to New Zealand and Australia, not a problem. The, the world's back up and going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. And, and look, yeah. you know, we don't want to get political, do we? Um, but that's never a bad thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. The, the the fact that we can, you know, you, you know, you guys are getting gigs now. Uh, you, you, yeah. you know, it's you, you got got to be a good thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. You know, we. Uh, it was funny because I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and I was talking to Boner Jams because I'm interested in a seven string. You know, I want to go back to some. Petrucci's type stuff and uh, was oh, he knows all that stuff man yeah he, he oh, oh. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> um, uh, even Pliny I was I was I, I'm totally getting into some of Pliny's music too and he's I wow. know he's got a couple of seven strings there too um but we were discussing uh um, with another friend availability of seven strings and there's so many on the market right now because everybody during COVID bought so much gear that now that the world's reopening, they're like, I have too much gear, I got to get rid of it. And so with the world reopening, there's 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 a ton of inventory out there of quality stuff. So interesting that you should say that because I've yeah. got a very good friend of mine who manages the local rock shop here, which is like our um, guitar center here in, in, yeah. in New Zealand. And during the lockdown, I was talking to Bob and, and Bob told me, he said, Andrew, we've run out of high end guitars. Yeah. And I said, I said, what? He said, yeah, Les Pauls, Fenders, all the $10,000, 6000 you know, um, dollar guitars that, 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 and Marshalls. And I said, what's happening? He said, man, the people, the guys, you know, of a certain age who would normally go to Europe for a ski trip and then go to the yep. islands, you know, um, um, who haven't been able to do that have decided, okay, I'm finally going to get that guitar I've always wanted and that yeah. amp that I've always wanted. Correct. 
Correct. Well, listen, it's happened. It happened here too. Um, and even I even saw it with the summertime. You know, this, it, July was very very slow for me. Um, it's starting to pick up again. People are going back indoors, and you know, it's still you know 90 degrees here in the Northeast. Um, but uh, people are starting to play again. You know, and we know when October hits, people are going to be inside. You know, researching a little bit more on their iPads and their computers yep. and their phones, and sales increases for the for the holiday season. So, um, yeah, how many how many seven? I had a dream the other day. I was telling uh, uh, Boner Jams that Eddie Van Halen was playing a seven string. <laughs> more like a nightmare, <laughs> right? Just because I've been researching them so much for myself that it, it kind of just slid into my subconscious. But uh, I'll get one soon. I'll get one second. Yeah, I, I, I've watched a lot of shows that Bone has done uh, with um, uh, Jay yeah. on a on a channel that they were involved in. And, uh, you know, the, these guys, those two guys know Ibanez guitars. They, they, oh, yeah. they know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you, yeah, you're in good hands if you want to get good advice. I'm yeah, convinced. No, uh, they've been very helpful at increasing my budget. <laughs> <laughs> I... Uh, I, I, okay, I've got to say this. I've got to say this while we're while we're watching this, and Boner yeah. Jams is here. So, so I was watching. I'm sure it was Boner Jams. Maybe it wasn't Boner. Oh no, I won't say the story because I might I might get it wrong. Okay, um, no worries. I, 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 yeah. Um, no, I, just, just, just let me ask Boner Jams one question. Boner Jams, did you buy a Les Paul recently? Doesn't sound like him. I'd be surprised if the answer is yes. Oh, someone's there. Just we just wait. We're gonna have we're gonna have a little bit, a little bit of stillness here until he answers yeah, that Lord. question. But it was funny because so, I was talking to him about an Ibanez seven string, and he was he was ge he was gearing me towards the you know the nineteen nineties version, which are you know four times more than I wanted to pay. But obviously when when you have nice equipment you want nice stuff so he was he was gearing me towards going to some early gems not gems okay. they were called uni universes back then so yeah i'm, I'm just trying to because my brain is old and i was i was watching some channels <laughs> and, and and i think it was him and it was on a it was on a, a show with dave nesdal okay and and Dave Nesdal uh, was talking to a guy, and he's got all these eighties guitars. Yeah. And he said, and he says to Dave, he goes, "Oh, I went out and bought a Les Paul during the week, and uh, I'm watching yeah. the." And and he pulls out this guitar, and it's not just an ordinary Les Paul; it's an R nine Les Paul. You know, it's the uh, 58, 58 oh, uh, rip, yeah, fifty eight yeah. rip replica, which is like four times the price of a of yeah. a normal Les Paul. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my God! You know that's amazing. Um, um, so we've got a couple of other things, guys, that we're going to um, we're going to talk about. Do you want to talk about your new products, uh, yeah, Lewis, or you want to talk about um, um, a new X that you've bought? What do you want to do first, brother? I'll I'll, I'll finish off with the straps because I'm I'm very excited about. You know, I told a, a lot of people I'm announcing a new strap on this show. Uh, I had two straps that are going to come out uh, last week and this week. Last week, I already posted. Um, you know, we, I, that's the new one that's going to I'm going to post this one tomorrow available for sale. I'm a huge Richie Sambora fan. Um, and so I remember him early on with this uh, black. What I found out is a Charvel, um, the reverse headstock. But that strap, I remember. Um, I remember looking at him early on and, and saying, why does he have a country Western strap on? And he's a rock and roll guy. I, I didn't associate the conchos with rock and roll, but he, he had it on a, on a couple of different guitars and on a cover of, I think, I, I think a guitar magazine back then. I remember staring at it for a while. And so I've reproduced uh, perfectly um, this strap uh, with the concho. So I have it here actually. So this, okay. this one's an exciting one for me because um, I remember this one when I was younger. Um, so wow. we've, we've, we've basically, it's a nice thick piece of leather. It's one piece. Uh, you can see the rivets that hold it on together. Um, and it's, it's a weighty piece. It's, it's hefty. Um, but I'm very, very, very proud of the way this one came out just because for me personally, it was one of the ones that I remember, 
you know, I was I was born in 1977, so I don't remember seeing Ed with the uh, um, with the uh, the bomber strap on. But I remember Richie Zambora with this one on. Um, and the person who's making this for me uh, told me that back then, back in the 80s, there weren't strap makers. Um, so what a lot of guitar techs would do is they would take belts and alter the belts. So this, you know, it, it could look like a belt. Um, ah, the okay. so they were telling me how sometimes a lot of the guitar techs to, to offer something different to their guitar players would alter belts. Uh, and then that's the mentality of this one. You know, we know Richie Sambora's guitar tech. And so we've spoken to him and uh, it's a little bit foggy uh, uh, for this particular strap but it's one of the ones that we see him wearing early on and I'm very excited about it. So I'm going to be posting that one tomorrow available for sale. I have 10 of those. I made a limited amount of those. Um, wow. Nine, nine of them are going to be for sale because I'm keeping one for myself. There's <laughs> 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 so only going to be nine out there. And then the other one that uh, I posted earlier this week is I'm a big fan of George Lynch. Um, and the exciting part about George Lynch uh, recently, I, I think it was last year, he bought that Les Paul. It's a 1960s uh, Les Paul. He bought that from G.E. Smith. So G.E. Smith, um, we know him here in the States. He was the, you know, he was in a bunch of different bands. But I remember him when I was younger as the uh, musical director for Saturday Night Live back in the, uh, sure. in the um, but And that particular guitar, there's pictures of G.E. Smith using it with um, Roger Waters, uh, Prince, a um, bunch of different people he used it. Uh, he, where he could see use it. So George Lynch ended up buying it. And the first thing obviously that caught my eye was that strap. Uh, and I know the person who made that strap. And so the story goes, I haven't received confirmation on it, that that strap was made for GE Smith. And I guess, I'm guessing here, when, um, when he bought the guitar off of him, um, the strap was in the case. And, and oh. maybe George Lynch just said, hey, it's the strap that goes with the guitar. I'll just keep them together. Because there's no pictures of George Lynch using that strap before he bought this guitar. Okay. So that was my question. Okay. Yeah. So that makes perfect sense, Lewis. Yeah. So I'm guessing the strap came with the sale of the guitar, belonged to G.E. Smith, uh, because the person that makes it for me has a connection to G.E. Smith. And uh, and they said, we probably made it for him. Um, and so I got, uh, I think, five of them made. Um, and so those are for sale now. Uh, sold two of them so far, so there's three left, and those those are these guys. So it's uh, there's the back end of it. Sorry, um, but it's it's a cool strap. It's because it's it's nice and thin, and it's obviously leather backed, nice little oh. grain leather back there. Uh, but it's the one that he's using in that picture. It's just got a strap lock on it. And so again, trying to veer off into some of my passions in George Lynch and. Uh, um, and Richie Sambora and a couple other people coming up next. You know, I'm getting asked for Steve Ray Vaughan, but there's a bunch of people who make Steve Ray Vaughan straps. And I'm a huge fan of David Gilmore. And I ended up buying my first strap, I think, in 20 years. I bought a Gilmore strap. You know, it's a suede strap with the leather X's on them. It's the one um, that Hendrix, it's the it's the Hendrix one. one. Correct. Yes. Correct. And so that's, yes. that's the one I keep with this. This is a 69 strap back there. I keep it with that one, my... But I think this uh, the Sambora one's going to take over pretty quickly. Um, and and I'm sure it. I'm sure that uh, uh, Roger um oh uh, David uh, Gilmore strap well I'm sure you'll have a market for that as well. Convinced yeah, there's, of listen, it. there's there's people making it already, and I'm happy to you know support the people that are making it already. So that I, it's not something I'm interested in doing because there's people who do a, a wonderful job already. Uh, here, in fact, you know, let me go get it. It's right here. No problem. You do that and I'll just throw up um, some comments. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. You guys, especially with, with us live, uh, make the show even better. Oh, that's, look at that. That's the Gilmore oh. one. So it's cool. It's got this little adjustable piece on the back here. Oh, where man. You can, it's tied into like a little, but very nicely done. So, you know, I didn't make it myself, but happy to support the people that are doing some different things out there. Um, I just got to use oh. it. <laughs> I got to practice. <laughs> that's the, oh, hard, that's the hardest part is finding time to practice. So, um, uh, Ben wants to know what month in 77 were you born? I was uh, March, March 22nd. I'm the first day of spring. Cause he's a bicentennial boy. Um, 
nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, 45 years old. Uh, and you don't look a minute past 32, mate. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> um, some nice comments here. George Lynch is getting better with age. Is he what, mate? He, yeah, 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 he does. It's funny. Yep. I, grew up, I grew up during the uh, Lynch mob era. Um, but obviously there's a bunch of fans that know him from the Doggin era too. So, um, yes, I am taking orders for the bomber shop. Going back to that. Um, I'm taking pre-orders for the bomber shop because they're in work, uh, and so many people have asked me for them. So I'm gonna I'm taking pre-orders. So if you, if you guys are interested um, in a bomber strap, uh, you can go on my website fairfieldguitarco.com, uh, and they're available for pre-order there. Uh, I'm I'm mentioning that they're probably going to be ready to ship end September, early October, um, with the goal of shipping middle September. I'm giving a little bit more dating. Uh, so when you get it early, you might be happy. But if, if things go sour and it takes another two weeks to get them done, then we're right on time. So Well, look, I think at the end of the day, people just need to get their orders. And I think it's a little bit like what we were talking about in the green room before, too, um, about uh, our orders with uh, the new, the new up-and-coming Steve Rosen book, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Lewis, that we're all anticipating. So uh, you heard that they're adding um a, a, a new a new chapter yeah so i i looked into it uh earlier too i actually emailed steve and i uh i said you know the book's still coming or did my money get lost and he's like no 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 he's like i'm, I'm adding another chapter um he says I'm, i decided to last minute to add another chapter with some info that i think you all will appreciate and obviously there's no rush i'd rather have something be done right than done quickly and so he's working on it and um I'd love to, uh, um, I'm, I'm anxiously waiting for the day when I can get my hands on one and read it. So um, it's coming. I, I think this is this is my, my little theory with what Steve's yeah. trying to do with this book. Um, obviously, we're all Van Halen nuts and we know that he had a relationship with Eddie, a personal relationship. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of shows and videos where he's spoken about the fact, you know, that, uh, you know, with, with Eddie's passing, it was, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, an issue for him, you know, that he had to, um, to, to, to work through, which right. is understandable. Um, and doing this book, Lewis, was part of that process that he said. So, so I reckon the reason why he's taking his time with this book is because he knows that whatever he offers on the marketplace is going to be a definitive yeah. account of of Eddie's life purely because of the relationship that he had with Eddie. He he yeah. knows what this book this is this just isn't going to be some paperback book on the market. Right. It's going to be right. you, you know um uh can I say bible maybe you know no, it, 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 from what I understand, it, it you know he had a little bit of Eddie's blessing before. It, he yeah. just never brought it to fruition. He was talking to Eddie about like I think he posted on Instagram the other day about different yeah. titles for the book that Eddie was talking to him about too. So it, it's something that as much as um, you know we all look at it and say oh he's doing it for the notoriety after Eddie passed. No, he had Eddie's blessing doing this beforehand. So ha no, having that in mind, too, makes it even more exciting. It's not some guy who just sat with him for an hour and interviewed him. It's a guy who's known him for years and years and years and has been part of his life. And um, I, I'm very interested in to get my hands on it. So it, it'd be pretty cool. And, and again, it's just another example of the plonkers and the idiots and the ding-dongs out there, guys, that have got no idea because clearly Steve Rosen has to get this book out, you know, while he's still around to do it, you know. So, yeah, yeah and that's why he's doing it, you, you know. That first-hand account, that first-hand knowledge, experience or history is always going to beat some journalist hiding right. somewhere in some log cabin that's going through old Guitar World magazines and yeah. writing an account of what he thinks may have happened. Yeah, no, and, uh, you know, it's... There's, there's always the speculation for somebody who didn't know somebody intimately, and uh, there's no speculation here. He knew him intimately, and it's, uh, uh, it, it's, it's going to be a very exciting read. I'm just yeah. sad I won't get it and read it on the beach. I'll have to read it while I'm shoveling some snow, maybe. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You well, guys well, well, 
you're, you're the opposite yeah. weather down there. You're yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've got four weeks off to read it, so you might have That's to take right. some time off. But, but, but an, another little plug too, I suppose, for these guys here, you know, with their book because they they knew Eddie, you know, yeah. uh, Brad and Chris Skill. They, they they met him, they hung out with him. Um, and what was really interesting when they were um, on our show talking about this book, you know, um, uh, the Van Halen people didn't really want to be um, involved or, or have this coming out to celebrate, yeah. you know, in celebration of Eddie's um, uh, 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 one year anniversary of his passing. But but these guys realized that they had to, you know, because yeah. of their experience with them. And that made sense, didn't it, Lewis? Doesn't yeah. it? And I know, I know Niels Laws, I always pronounce his name wrong. Laws, um, who's a photographer, I think he's coming out with a new book as well. I have his old book here, uh, but I, I, I know there's a new book coming out with him as well. I've seen that, and I know some guys on social media who put that order in, and, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm probably not going to eat for a year if I put that order in. I should. I, uh, I should put it in because I, this one's amazing. It was a great source of information for me even – getting you know pictures of straps and stuff it was it was a good book uh but now i'm buying a whole bunch of books from uh from asia you know from uh japan um on uh tour guitars you know they, they're into the gear crazy which is amazing to see you know we're probably more into the music here in the states but over in japan they're they're crazy into gear and so they they, they release some of these books um i don't know if you've seen these some of these guys um, where there's just there's just gear info. You know, this one's goes by the albums. It's giving yes. you all the details. Um, but there's some books. Um, yeah, this is a good one. This is a great one. Yes. Kurt recommended this one for me. Like, look, it goes into. Hold on, let me open up one of the pages. Like you can see the original bomber strap right there. Yep. And so this one goes into even in the back. It'll go into some really heavy gear stuff. Um, the good part is my 11 year old daughter taught me how to go on Google translate and just download the app. Uh, and it'll translate all the, the Japanese into English for me. So I can read these. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we were lucky enough to have um, um, yes. in the early days of the 5150 show, Lewis, we had a guy called Steve Anderson, yeah. um, based in Canada, and he came on and he gave us a lot of information about those books. And he did, yeah. he said exactly what you said that the Japanese have been interested in the details because that's yeah. culturally, culturally what they are. So, so Which while is, they're listening to the music, they have to have this, the, 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 you know, the, the, the details of everything. And, and, and what, what's interesting, too, is apparently Eddie and, and the guys, you know, other bands when they toured uh, Japan were always amazed that the photographers wanted to take photos of their gear because in the States, they were, they just wanted to take photos of the band with girls. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, this is, this is, I just got this one. This is another great one. This was this is the live tour is 78 and 79. So this was all the... Uh, you know, again, more wow. gear stuff. Yeah, of yeah. what they were touring with. Um, so, so, and you didn't get anything of that in the states during that time. I, I would guess not, but here it's like you're you're getting everything. Yeah, it's amazing. It's and so it, it brings you back to what we were talking about, Rob Johnson. You know, I I, oh. I would love to talk to him about doing something with Eddie's amps because we always talk about guitars, and I know there's a whole bunch of new EVH amps coming out. Um, yep. And even personally, I'd like to analyze different years uh, because I'm one of those guys that believes more than the pickups that were used. Um, sure. I do believe your fingers and your amp make a big difference. Uh, and I think we're concentrating maybe a little to bit too much on pickups. Um, you know, my whole life I've, I've concentrated on two pickups. One is the Tone Zone and the other one is the PAF Pro. And I can get almost every sound imaginable from George Lynch to, you know, to, to Eddie Van Halen by tweaking my amp. Uh, and yeah. now with the modern aesthetics to amps, with all these these modern amps, um, I think the amps are going to start becoming more important than the pickups sooner or later. Yeah, and, and and look, if you guys are going to do anything on Rob's channel, please let us know because uh, we, we, we consider it an honor if we can help disseminate um, that, that video that you guys might plan if you're going to deep dive on the amps because... Um, 
I'll yeah, we all know. I always yeah, we like all know Rob. It's his house, so he's got to he's got to he's got to set out the invite. I'm always I'm like you. I'm as, as soon as the invite goes out, I'm there. But um, we got to nudge him, and he's got to be uh, he's got to be the one that gets it going. So I'll nudge him. <laughs> awesome. Good night, Boner Jams. Thank you very much for the super chat, brother. And uh, you guys have a great show over there. And um, I'm going to do one more plug, guys. If anyone is watching the replay of the show, um, go to our channel's page and subscribe to all our friends over there. Help them. It's easy to subscribe. Easy to subscribe. And also, if you're a channel that gets subscribers, subscribe back. Don't be a channel that keeps the subscriptions. It's easy. Take the time. Have a coffee and go back and subscribe to everyone that subscribes to you. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, like I say, like I was saying, uh, Lewis, it, it'll be a fantastic show because we know that Rob will have that information, yeah. and 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 he he won't even need to research it. He could probably just sit live and just tell you everything. You know, there's another great thing coming up in November. There's a store here, uh, not far from me, in Greenwich, Connecticut, which is about 20 miles away from me, um, called Greenwich Music. Uh, yep. They do what, what they've called EVH Con. They've been doing yep. it for the last couple of years. Uh, and I know probably Rob is going to be down for that. You know, he's not too far and there's going to be a bunch of people here. Um, it might be interesting to do something during that too, because there's going to be a whole bunch of people right in my backyard. Um, and Joe Summer, the gentleman who runs Greenwich Music, does a great job. And uh, yes. I'm anxious I'm anxious to, to go to my first one. He, he invited me during COVID. And my wife was like, mm, not, not a good idea to go. And so uh, I gently backed out of the one they did during COVID. But this is the first one since the world reopened. Then I think everybody's going to be there. <laughs> so I'm looking forward yeah, yeah, to I think it. Yeah, I think you're right. It, yeah, I think you're right, Lewis. Every, everyone's going to be there. And again, well, look, if you get there and, um, you, you know, if you get some time to go live and spend five minutes in the, uh, in the car park, because you probably won't be able to do anything live and in, inside yeah. because everyone will be playing. But if you yeah. want to do a quick uh, uh, jump on our channel and tell us your thoughts and impressions, um, you have that invitation. If you do go, you. we'd love, I, I, we'd love know, to get I, you on. I might be busy selling straps that day. <laughs> but I'll certainly keep you in mind. No, 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 you'll have plenty of time because they'll all be sold out. You'll have plenty That's of time. <laughs> Um, uh, look, thank you for sharing us uh, those pics with uh, the the new straps that you're um, working on. And, and look, I'm I'm sure there's always that interesting crossover um, with different artists, especially from that '80s period. You know, yeah. um, you mentioned Stevie Ray Vaughan, certainly an '80s guitarist. You know, one of my heroes. Um, oh, yeah. Me too. Um, but but definitely definitely a key decade for for guys like us. But you had something else that you wanted to uh talk about lewis uh with us um yeah uh, 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 yeah i know i don't know anything about other than yeah, you I'm told sorry. me <laughs> not <laughs> yeah this is a new what? acquisition for us. sorry this is this is the time for the gearheads all right um, this i purchased recently off of a friend of mine it's a 69 strat it's a real 69 oh. strat uh but it's got a great story to it um Basically, so I grew up in the Bronx uh, in New York City, and so this um, came from the Bronx. There was a gentleman who owned it. He owned a dry cleaner, uh, and the yep. story goes is that he kept it at the dry cleaners. So he bought it in 69, kept it at the dry cleaners, and around 74, um, you know, when the world was a little bit different, um, sure. he got into an argument with his wife uh, at the dry cleaners and threw it at her. <gasps> And so, you'll see it here, it cracked it straight in half. There's a mm. line that goes straight through. Straight in half. You see that line there? Yeah. So I took the pickguard off, obviously, when I bought it to check the pickups and everything. The pots are dated to 66. The neck and middle pickup are correct. This is a, uh, a, a super distortion. It's a single. Oh. It's, it didn't come with the original bridge, but it's original. Uh, and you could see the crack going down the middle. Uh, oh, of the no. guitar. And so what the gentleman did, what the gentleman did is he, he crazy glued it back together. So oh. you can see all the, the excess crazy glue that's on there. Um, and he took house brown, brown house paint and painted the whole guitar brown. And so you can still see the back still has a whole bunch of brown on it. Uh, but the, the white 
is, you know, back then, this was a sunburst, and back then the sunburst had a white uh, base coat to them. So you'll see yes. a little bit of the sunburst out there. But it's yes. funny because it, it looks like a, everybody thinks it's a custom shop. Um, and I'm like, no, it's not a custom shop. Not it's the real deal. And so, you know, somebody put uh, shallow tuners on there back in the day. Wow. Um, and, uh, and so uh, definitely been refretted a couple of times. It's got jumbo frets on it. So somebody back in the 80s or late 70s definitely had it refretted. Plays like a dream. Sounds incredible. Uh, oh. But, uh, you know, I know it's not politically correct, but I call it the wife beater. Um, <laughs> there it is. She's the wife beater. 69 strap. Little, little bit. Ooh, I'm going to break it. A little bit of flame on the neck. I don't know if you guys can oh. see that. But right there, you can see a little bit of flame right there. Um, but cool guitar. Cool. It sounds great. And, and talking about Stevie, Stevie Ray, I was I was doing a little Stevie Ray on this the other day. I'll post it in the next couple of weeks or so. You, um, you can't go wrong with the Stratocaster, can you? No, you really can't. You know, if, if you know, I own a couple of guitars that try to mimic Strat sounds, but you can never get a strat sound out of a, you know, you need a strat to get a strat sound. And so I'm, what year I'm is that again, Lewis? This is a 69. Oh, gosh. Yeah, 69. So there's, look, have there's you had, car. you can see have, the have you had, right there. <laughs> have you um, had a guitar that old personally, um, uh, a, a strat um, in your collection? I have not. The oldest thing I've ever owned is I had a 25th anniversary Strat when I was younger, when they were, you know, when uh, the ones that have the 25th anniversary, like written right there, they were the silver guitars that ended up turning like a green color. Um, I think it was 70, I forgot what year it was, but you do the math. So 77 or 74, mm. 75, it's got to be. But nobody liked them when I was a kid because every Strat made in the 70s was a piece of crap, you know. And now it's it's starting to, you know, now they're 40 years old and people are starting to say, you know what, they weren't that bad and the prices are skyrocketing on them. Uh, uh, but this was, yeah. this was just a, a particular one where um, I probably, it's the only way I could afford a 69 Strat was to get one that was cracked in half. Um, and uh, because a real one in perfect condition is probably a couple of, you know, it's got to be fifteen, sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000. Uh, I didn't pay anywhere close to that, but I can get the same sound, I guess. Well, yeah, I, I, but you've got that unique story. Um, and, and look what Gretsch Zeppelin has said. You know, that's what happens when you ask your husband to play Freebird one too many times. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing that I was joking about is that it, it, it was such a different world back in 1974 that I think it would be the husband beater now. They're like, my wife would beat me silly with a guitar nowadays. <laughs> uh. Oh my! Lord. Oh, it's uh, what what a story though. But gosh, can you just? I'm going to isolate you one more time. If you can hold that up, because you know there's it's nothing like a classic. Oh boy! If I can get some of the light on it, hold on. There you go. So and it's, it's just got mojo. Thing. Doesn't it have mojo? Wow! Yeah, it's, got, it's got a ton of it. And it's funny. You can even see the uh, um, the bridge is all like rusted and caked and. Uh, the funny I've part got to is ask you, I've got to ask this question, L Lewis. Is that yes. a keeper? It is a keeper. Okay. Good yeah, man. This one, I, I don't think I'll ever have a chance to own a, a, a late 60s Strat in my life. So um, okay. it sounds great. It does everything I need it to. It's got the great story to it. Uh, there's no reason to get rid of this one. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, that I, Boy, I love that guitar. I, I, I You know. I, and I love the story, you know, threw it yeah. at the wife. I was never a huge big headstock fan, but beggars can't be choosers, I guess, right? Well, well, look, when you put that into, um, when, when you c compare that to a 69 Stratocaster versus, say, a 2020 model, the 69 Strat with the big headstock is always going to win, isn't it? If you don't Correct. particularly like the big headstock. You see the crack on the inside there? Yeah. How hysterical is that? It just, it just, you can see the crack going all the way down the center of it. And so what's interesting, so this, this guy, you know, when he was in the dry cleaners, so for his relaxation, he'd just grab the strap, plug it into an amp and, and yes, the dry yeah, cleaners and play. He was a passionate musician who just kept one at work. And I, listen, when you buy a 69 Strat in 1969, it's like saying, yeah. you know, it's like us saying, I just bought a, you know, 2022 20, Strat. It, it doesn't mean yeah. anything. 
Nice. It, it, you know, the, the, the story is half the value of the guitar. You know, obviously it sounds like a Strat. It's got the 69 pickups in there. It's got, it's, it's all original except for that, uh, for this guy and the, and the tuners. It's got shallow tuners. Um, um Jimmy Hendrix so didn't, Jimmy Hendrix didn't own a dry cleaners, did he? No, he probably did. <laughs> he, he wasn't married to I don't think. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's funny. I, I showed the picture to, again, bringing up Phil X. And he was like, man, you got to get that fixed. It's going to sound so much better if you get it fixed and bring it to somebody right. And I said, there's no way I would do that. There's absolutely no way. This, 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 the story alone is half the fun of owning this. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 and you can always reference, you can always reference this video to, to, um, <laughs> to, 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 to people about backing up the story. Look, I went live with it. <laughs> what a, what a great story. Um, we've got Keith Campbell in the chat. Um, he, he's a very good friend of the hey. channel as well. Keith. Yeah, I know Keith. How you doing? Uh, awesome, awesome. Um, uh, it's always a pleasure hanging out with you, Lewis. Always a pleasure. Same here, same here. While, while I got it out, I know some, I know the Van Halen freaks are going to want to see this guy. So, oh, yes, thank you. Out. So seven ninety nine when they first came out, and they're going for two six in in the states now. Correct silly wow silly but it's listen i i give fender and evh a lot of kudos that the guitars are beautiful they're really nicely done they sound great they play wow. great uh this one's made in mexico this one had one of the first the early made in mexico sticker it's like a yes. it's like a stamp on the back of the neck as opposed to a uh a sticker um but no they, they play beautifully you know they they Stays in tune, plays beautifully. There's nothing to complain about. They're beautiful guitars, very nicely made. So, so I have to ask this question. So, how important do you think Eddie's involvement and in, and in, and in, and the design and the implementation of that going to you know um, uh, you know uh, being available for a mass market? How important was that? Do you think um, with the end result of the guitar? Yeah, listen, it, it's it's always nice to get the owner's input on it. Um, the only thing that clouds me is Eddie did so much so often to all of his guitars that mm -hmm. none of us really know what his preference was. Because okay. even the Frankenstrat, which was a guitar that he loved, had four different necks on it, you know, tons of different pickups on it. Um, you know, there's people who know the details way better than I do, but... He was always fooling around. He was always uh, 2014. Correct. Yes, this is a 2014 Mikey. Um, he was always fooling around. And so, you know, he says he was chasing tone, but I think he was just keeping himself busy. He just, it was part of the passion that he liked to fool around. So do we know how much Eddie had influence on this? I don't know. Like, let's, this one has a, a compound radius neck. I don't know if Eddie ever had a compound radius neck. You know, from what I understand, they were all 10... Uh, sure. radius um maybe when he was doing stuff with charvel charvel obviously is known for doing compound radius necks but we all know he got bodies from boogie bodies he might have gotten some necks from boogie bodies uh kramer did some flat necks kramer did some compound radius necks so um we don't know i it, and obviously with fender being involved yep. are great I, I, I agree with mike um with fender being involved just like me with the straps you have to think of the mass market like what's the mass market going to want uh, as opposed to what Eddie wants, because they might've made a guitar that Eddie thought was perfect. That probably was unsellable um, yeah. because of the, maybe the, the radius or the fretboard or who knows. Um, so uh, unless we hear it from Eddie himself and there's, I know there's a bunch of videos, but uh, the thing that clouds me with Eddie is every guitar ad he made was, this is the best guitar I've ever, you know, there's a Kramer ad that says, this is the best guitar I've ever designed. And then there's a music man ad that says, we've tried the rest, now try this one. So he was a marketing genius too. You know, he, was, he wasn't Gene Simmons, but he was certainly was in the mentality to sell guitars. Um, yeah, yeah. But personally, how much did Eddie actually put into this? Don't know. You know yeah. we, we, there's people who might know better than me, but I'm, I'm speculative of, of uh, um, you know, there's pictures of him using this on tour. Yep. You know the yeah. the reissue one, so we know he used them. 
Um, and the, again, you know, the good thing, yeah. the good thing about that though, that situation, that whole situation for um, for guitar players like us and everybody else around the world, Lewis, is it, it gave people, if they weren't in a position to build a guitar, an opportunity yeah. to, to to finally have something, you know, yet you know that resembled uh, um, a guitar that they'd been, you know, basically lusting over in guitar magazines. Um, Correct. For 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 you know. Yeah, and basically the whole far. life. This is my favorite pattern by far. It's missing the, though. Mikey will agree with me. It's missing the finger here that's pointing to her butt. The original <laughs> one had a little hand right here, a little black hand right here. But um, yeah, we can we can get anal about a lot of stuff. But I'm just in. I'm enjoying it. I'm uh, I'm, I'm happy I own it, and I'm going to take care of it. Awesome. Good. Um, we've got Chad from Canada in the chat good to see you brother um look look it's always a pleasure uh lewis to have you come on the channel we know that this won't be the last time uh that lewis uh comes on he has a permanent invite anytime mate you want to come on and Very and hang out with us um you, you know we'd love to uh do this um and the fact that you're look in a way looking after the van halen community is commendable well, no, listen, I hear that from a lot of people and I, I, I take, uh, I don't take that lightly. I, you know, I do it out of passion, but I'm glad people are enjoying uh, what I'm doing. And there's a lot of other people out there doing a lot of the same to just fuel the Van Halen passion. And so uh, I'm glad to be part of the community. Uh, I'm glad that the community welcomed me, you included. Um, yeah. Very appreciative of, uh, of my life after the straps. <laughs> So it's uh, thank you very very much. I thought I was the only one before the straps. Now I know there's there's a bunch of crazy people like me out there. <laughs> and, and, and look, I suppose at the end of the day too, you, you know, um, we've said it before. You know, uh, you get to a stage in your life where uh, you want to have things. You know, um, yeah. you, you know, you, 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 like, like we said earlier. You know, a good friend of mine, a manager of a, a guitar shop. You know, um, guys that wouldn't normally buy high end guitars. You know um we're buying them so you, you know there, there's always going to be a situation for guys out and girls out there to go and get this this stuff because you know they want to get that authenticity yeah. um i and, and look i love it i i, I commend it I, I i consider it an honor that you've um given us an opportunity on our channel to even talk about it lewis so thank, thank you. you no thank you i appreciate it it's uh i'll leave you with one last thought that somebody told me the other day you know, nobody in the 1970s was listening to music from the 1920s. You know, we're in the year 2020 and we're still passionate and actively listening to music from the 1970s and 80s. Uh, rock and roll is not going anywhere. You know, it's it's a genre that has stayed and my nine and 11 year old kid are like listening to like Crazy Train and Queen. Uh, my daughter is obsessed with Queen. Um, thanks to the community that uh, supports it. You know, it, we're, she's listening to music from 40, 50 years ago and enjoying it immensely. Uh, so rock and roll's here to stay. Uh, you know, we all of us are passionate about music and it's a great opportunity. Uh, the gearheads in us are even uh, crazier than the rest, me included. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's all about the music. Going out and listen to it, listen to it, enjoy it, spread it, learn it. If you play an instrument and... Uh, have other people learn it and play it. It's the only way to keep it going, right? Well said. And on that note, uh, guys, we're going to uh, leave you all. We're going to uh, wish uh, everyone well and the best. I'm going to be back here in about three hours' time with Brad. Uh, I'll just give oh, you guys Brad, a bit I said of hi, up. by the way. Sorry yeah, I missed yeah. you. Oh, Brad, I said hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we're going to come back and we're going to be uh, talking about ZZ Top. But... Uh, um, I'm going right. to steal your quote um, um, about the people in the uh, 70s not listening to people in the 20s, 19 to, I, I think that is a fantastic analogy. Yeah. That is, I think that sums it up. So yeah. um, I'm going to steal that, but I promise I'll reference it back to you when I do quote it. I promise. Go for it. It wasn't my thought to begin with, so just spread it. <laughs> and you have the right beard to do a ZZ Top uh, show. I don't. I'd, uh, I'd have to come back in about a year with the correct beard for it. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to cruise. We're going to play uh, the British Electric Blues video um, out. 
uh please subscribe to our channel and our friends um all subscribers get a subscription back and please go and check out lewis's uh channel and his social media accounts they'll be attached to this video if you're watching us on replay tell him that the 5150 show sent you over there so that um it, he'd at least come back and do a third show with us i i'm i'm immensely honored you'd consider me so thank you very much mm -hmm.